right, so now we are going to be taking notes on our two pages that we just finished, cutting and gluing into our composition notebook. So subjects and predicates. Um, multiple, there are multiple kinds of subjects and predicates. And I shouldn't even say kinds. I should say levels of subjects and predicates. Today we're just going to look at the basic subject and the basic predicate. So each sentence will always have, no matter what, a subject and a predicate. Okay, um, subject you may have already heard about. You probably know that it is who or what the sentence is about. So um, we're going to flip open the tab and then underneath this top part of the tab here, we're going to write that it is a person, a place, a thing, an idea, an event that is taking place or being talked about in the sentence. And you probably guessed that it is a noun. Now, it is not just any noun in the sentence. It is who or what the sentence is about, the main subject of the sentence. So there could be multiple nouns in one sentence, but that doesn't mean that they're all the subject. So basically what we're looking at is who or what person, place, thing, idea, or event is doing the action in the sentence. That is our subject, okay? So it is who or what the sentence is about. You're gonna find yourself asking that question to yourself many, many times saying, who or what, who or what, who or what is the sentence about, okay? Now, we're going to Flip over to the predicate side. So you may flip that tab up. And underneath that tab, we are going to write, it is the action verb. I'm gonna write the word does underneath because it's what the subject does. So the action that the subject does. Um, you may also find the predicate is a linking verb, which aren't as obvious of verbs as action verbs. You guys, when you think of verbs, you think of these types up here, action verbs. Linking verbs are saying the subject is doing something, or the subject was reading. Um, was would be a helping verb, but it could also be the linking verb in this case, too, if it didn't have an action verb attached to it. Okay, so the predicate, you probably haven't heard this word before, is simply the verb that's going on in the sentence. Now again, there could be multiple verbs going on in a sentence, but this predicate has a special name compared to just verb because it is what the subject is doing. Okay, so it's the subject is the person that is doing or the thing, place, idea, or event that is doing the main verb action or the linking verb of the sentence. So that's why they don't just call them nouns and verbs. They call them the subject because that's what the sentence or who the sentence is about. And this is the action or the linking verb that is taking place with that subject in the sentence. Okay, so I'm going to write underneath here what the subject is or does. Now that sounds kind of goofy right now, but as we get um, some examples looked at and worked with, you'll be able to understand that the predicate is what the subject is or what the subject does. Okay, now let's look down at this sentence at the bottom here. They have it sectioned off for you to show a natural break in the sentence. We're probably going to get to that in a couple days here, but right now we're just going to try to find the subject of this sentence. Okay, the big black dog licked the coffee mug. Now, I'm going to label the word dog with a little S on top, okay? That is who or what the sentence is about. Now, mug is also another noun in the sentence, but that's not the main subject of the sentence. That's not what's doing the action or is the um, verb. That is just another noun in there. So that's a noun, but not a subject of the sentence. The dog is a noun, but it is the subject of the sentence because it is... What is doing the action? And in this case, the dog is licking or licked the coffee mug. So I'm going to label this with a 
P up on top. Okay, so dog is our subject. P is our predicate, which is lit. Now, subject and predicate. If you ignore every other word in that sentence, okay, or whatever sentence you're working with, dog lit. What I always tell kids is find the subject, find the predicate. If you are not confident in your choice of what you chose for the subject and the predicate, say those two words together and think of a caveman. Cavemen, um, back in the day, only talked with subjects and verbs. They didn't have all these fancy words around the um, subjects and the verbs of the sentence or the predicate of the sentences. Dog licked. Well, if someone came up to you and said dog licked in the sentence, you probably can understand who they're talking about and what this person or thing that they're talking about is doing. Dog licked. Now, we don't know any details. The big black dog, we don't know that. We don't know what he licked, but we know that the dog licked something. Okay? So it kind of sounds like a caveman talking. Dog licked. When you find both the subject and the predicate together. Now, when you just find the subject and the predicate. We call that the simple subject and the simple predicate. Okay, so just the subject equals the simple subject. And you might see that labeled SS sometimes. Okay, oops, I put this box in the way. Just the subject is the simple subject. You can probably guess just the predicate is called the simple predicate. And we'll find that labeled sometimes SP. Simple subject, simple predicate. So we can actually label these two SS and SP. So now I'm going to have you flip over to the second page. In the second page, we are just going to be labeling the simple subject with an SS above it and the simple predicate with an SP above that. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Be patient with me as I get it lined up and straight. I'm as close to the screen as I can. All right. So the first sentence on this page, my hardworking dad pushed the lawn mower. So you're going to find who or what that sentence is about. Now you can probably find multiple nouns in there. I know lawn mower is a noun. I know dad is a noun. But which one of these two is um, the main subject of the sentence? Okay, who is doing the action? The lawn mower isn't doing the action. Dad is doing the action. So dad is my simple subject. Now, what is dad doing or does dad do? Dad pushed. So pushed is going to be my simple predicate. So now dad pushed. If a caveman were to come up to you and say that to you, you would go, yeah, dad is who that person is talking about. They must have pushed something. I'm not sure what. But then these extra words over here will help us tell more detail about it once we get working on this a little bit further here. Okay, let's look at the second sentence. The art museum opens on Monday. Now, what is our simple subject? Simple subject, who or what the sentence is about. Sometimes it might be easier to find your simple predicate first. What's the action of the sentence? Now, in this case, opens is the only verb in this sentence, so that is going to be our simple predicate. Okay, now what is opening? That question can be asked. You can ask yourself that question. What is opening or who is opening? To figure out what the subject is about. Now, I want you to just think. You're going to think of the main subject. No fancy words describing that subject should be attached to it. It's just the subject of the sentence. In this case, museum is our simple subject. Now, some might argue that art museum would be, both words would be our simple subject, but art is just describing the type of museum, okay? There are tons and tons of types of museums. Art is just one type of them. 
but we're talking about a museum in general. So museum is technically only our simple subject, not art museum. Okay, let's look at the next one. The cherry popsicle drips down onto my shirt. Okay, sometimes, like I said, it might help you to find the um, predicate first, so the main action of the sentence. Drips is, I think, the only verb in this case also. So that's going to be our simple predicate. Now, what is doing the dripping? Again, think about the main thing that's doing the action, not any descriptive words attached to that. So in this case, case popsicle is just our simple subject. Again, cherry is describing the type of popsicle. There are a bunch of different types of pops popsicles, different flavors of them. But the main subject of the sentence is talking about the popsicle. Okay, so that is our simple subject. Let's look at the next one. In the next few here. The mall is a fun place to meet friends. Okay, now think about or try to find all the nouns in the sentence here. I know mall is a thing, place is a noun, and friends is a noun. But what, what noun is being considered as the subject of the sentence? What's, what, who or what is that sentence about? It is talking about the mall. The mall is our subject because that is the place that you're meeting the friends. So that's kind of, if we get rid of mall in that sentence, that sentence wouldn't make sense because we don't know what is going on, what place, and where are they meeting friends. You kind of need this noun in order to make the rest of the sentence make sense. So that's our simple subject. All right, now, if you think of the two words that you have to ask yourself or kind of think about when you're trying to find the simple predicate, you'll notice that is is one of those words that you have to think about. So is is actually our simple predicate. That's a linking verb. There's no action attached to it, and it's not being considered a helping verb where there's an action verb right after it. It's just by itself. So it's considered a linking verb. Next one, our trip to Disney World was a blast. Now a couple nouns in there. Trip is a noun. Disney World is a noun because that's a place. Trip is a thing. But what is the main noun of the sentence? Without it, which one of those wouldn't let the sentence not make sense? Trip would be our simple subject. Okay, Disney World's a noun. I, I'll give you that but trip is the simple subject of the sentence. Now, what's our simple predicate? There's no action verb in here. We have a linking verb in here. Was is going to be our simple predicate. In the last sentence, Ella's little sister will swim in the race today. All right, this one might be easier to find the predicate first. What's the main action or um, linking verb going on in this sentence? Swim, swim is the simple predicate. Now, who is doing the swimming? The race isn't doing the swimming. Today's not doing the swimming. Ella is not doing the swimming. Little isn't doing the swimming. The sister is doing the swimming. So sister is our simple subject. So again, we don't need all these descriptive words in front of sister telling us um, more details about the sister included with our subject. Sister is the main subject, okay? Sister swim. If a caveman came up and said that to you, you would say, all right, someone's sister, we don't know who, is swimming somewhere for something, we're not sure what. Sister swim, trip was, mall is, popsicle drips, museum opens, dad pushed. Okay, these are all our simple subjects and simple predicates. I will zoom out really quickly so that if you need to copy any more down, if you happen to miss any, you have them right here for you. I'll go ahead and copy them down. Otherwise, that is all the notes that we're taking today. You will have a Google form attached to this assignment on Google Classroom. Um, you are going to be labeling the all capitalized words in the sentences in each question, either simple subject or simple predicate, okay? Um, there's no way to underline or bold words, at least not that I'm aware of right now, um, in each question in the Google form. So the word I want you to look at is in all capital letters. So please look at that. 
Um, and the directions are right underneath the title of the Google form if you have any questions on it. Otherwise, just shoot me an email if you have any other questions as well.